What is up everybody? Welcome to Lost Socket Garage. I'm Hunter. I'm Chris. And today we're going to be working on the 67 Mustang Thelma. We will be doing a front disc brake conversion by... Willwood. Wait, why are you saying it like that? Saying it like what? In a world full of cheap coilovers, tow hooks, and eBay turbos, one man set out to create a channel to educate, motivate, break things, fix those things that he broke, but most importantly, make the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Mother, join him as he goes driving through life. What's up, everybody? Uh, today we are going to be working on Thelma. We're going to be getting rid of the old. Uh, drum brakes in front. We're going to be putting on a new disc brake set by Willwood. A bunch of shiny shit. Chris, tell us, why is it important to have good disc brakes? I don't know. I like the Flintstone version where you just put your foot through the floorboard and stop it. Alright, so let's take a look at the stock setup. Hmm. <laughs> So <laughs> wheels still on. <laughs> Let's look at the stock setup. Look, a drum brake in front. Cool. These are not, old, rusty. Not very efficient. Not very efficient. This is a setup where if they weren't adjusted right or even had some wheel cylinder issues, if you stepped on the brakes, it could dart right or left. Make real fun for stopping. That doesn't sound like fun. Oh, it gets your adrenaline pumping, I'll tell you that. I'm sure it does. So, I've already taken off the other side, and if we actually take a little bit of a look here, normally there is a cotter pin right there. Uh, we take the cotter pin out, we take this bolt off, which normally is a, it's like a castle nut basically. This one's a little bit different than the driver's side. Uh, and then we pop this assembly off, and then we have to actually, so that the front of the drum comes off here, and then we look at the inside of the drum, and there are four bolts on the back side that you need to take off. You see one right there. Actually, you see two right there. Those are going to be nine sixteenths bolts. Uh, in order to get to uh, the one that's actually back here, I actually took this strut little rod, strut rod uh, off. Um, just a couple of bolts on the bottom. Then this whole thing actually pops off. And just, uh, we just set this on so you can look. Um, uh, basically, this is what you're left, left with. And on the front side, the bolts that come out. So these bolts go in through here. Now you'll notice that these are just kind of like little rectangle bolts. On some of them, uh, once you actually start taking the bolt off of the back, or the nut off of the back, it's going to push this out and allow it to turn. So all you have to do is just get some vice grips and then uh, poof, all four are out. And you're left with this pretty, pretty little spindle that we're actually going to uh, take a mini sandblast or two and uh, coat this with some paint, make it all pretty. Now, Chris, should we take a look at what we're putting on there? We should. All right, let's Got do it. Got a nice setup. So what we got is an actual Will Wood disc brake conversion kit, and if you want to panter into the vehicle... Panter? I will panter for you. <laughs> uh, we have some new discs with new races. Uh, comes with new bearings that we'll have to repack and then put on. Comes with the adapter plate that will bolt onto the spindle, so we can actually bolt on the cool calipers, like so. Yeah, these are four pot, correct? Yeah, four piston calipers. Now, so you can see a nice pretty. So light, too. Yeah. I know you can't feel this on camera, kids, but. They're really light. Compared really nice to mine. And light. New brake lines. And this Wilbur Kit, uh, so far, comes with everything you need to do the conversion. Obviously, when you start doing the conversion, you're going to find out whether or not the kit has everything included with it. It's pretty darn quick. But Wilwood is a massively huge company, uh, and typically their stuff fits really, really well. I've always wanted to put Will Woods on, so I'm pretty excited about this install. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take the other off, 
and we're gonna start cleaning. All right, we have made some progress. Uh, we had took the old brakes off, uh, actually sandblasted uh, most of the, the suspension here and I threw a coat of paint on. Um, we're probably gonna go back through and do a little bit more of a detailed paint on it depending on what the customer wants as far as a suspension setup because there's a lot you can do here. Um, make sure that when you're sandblasting, now you can do all this with a wire wheel, but just sandblasting was a little bit easier to kind of like get into all the smaller spaces. Uh, make sure that when you're sandblasting or wire wheeling, uh, you just throw some tape right here because we don't want this pitted uh, whatsoever. So on to the brakes. Hi, Chris. Hi. So uh, tell us, why is it? that we are doing front disc brakes on this car before well, we sell it. There's a few reasons. One, because it looks better. It does look better. Two, it stops a hell of a lot better. It does stop better. Even if it's not uh, booster vacuum assisted, even if it's just manual disc brakes, our one out there is that way, and it, from going from drum to that, it made a night and day difference on braking so you'll be able to stop safer not be going right or left depending on if your stuff's working or not it's just evenly distributed versus pushing out so now one of our philosophies here with the rollers is a lot of times when you go on you know craigslist or whatever your local classified website is uh and you get a car that's a roller it is it barely rolls uh it is all jacked up and it's a it's a massive project with our rollers here at, at Lost Socket Garage. What we wanted to do was uh, give the customer a, a real platform that they can build from where all they really have to do is just throw a motor and trans in it. So that's why we're going to be getting to the wiring. Um, you're going to have all wheel disc brakes. Now we're only throwing in the fronts right now because we are going to be throwing in a new rear end. Tell us about the rear end, Chris. So with our rollers, we like to do the 8.8 inch non-limited slip. So that's an upgrade that the customer can decide if they want to with gearing. So we just get a Mustang rear end GT um, from 87 to 2004. And it's slightly wider, but it's enough that it's not gonna make any differences. And typically you can get them for a couple hundred bucks with disc brakes already on them. So first of all, you get a diff that's stronger than the eight inch, that's more modern, and you get disc brakes for a couple hundred bucks versus if you bought it and then had to do the conversion, you're gonna be into it another $400 just in parts. Now this Willwood setup is it's pretty awesome so far. Um, it comes with this new bracket and I'll show you how the layout here. So our caliper is going to be right here. We just threw two bolts in it. Uh, you're going to have a bolt hole at the top. I've gone through some videos, some install videos and stuff, and uh, they don't really explain the exact placement. This will actually work for a three-bolt spindle as well as a four-bolt spindle, hence the extra holes. Um, and from here, we also got new lines. Chris, tell us about the lines. So these lines are braided. It's an upgrade from the standard rubberized hose. And they're a little longer than the rubber hose too. They're about two or three inches longer. So you get that extra clearance for the disc um, caliper. So, but it goes into the same exact spot that the rubber one do goes into and then goes to the caliper. Yeah, and it's held in there by just uh, the C-clip, the same clip that you, you take out. Um, this little clip, it actually comes with new clips. Now, just to give you guys uh, two tips. Number one, this actually, the Willwood kit comes with uh, two different nozzles on it uh, for the for two different ends of the lines. Um, let's see that one. Okay, so there's a slight difference for our 67. Now I don't know what the other one uh, is for. I don't know if it's for the the three bolt spindle. What it is for the 67 uh, four bolt spindle. We're going to use this one with this slightly thinner head because that fits directly onto our uh, brake line. Now a couple things when taking the old ones out uh, you're just going to pop off this bracket and uh, there will be a let's see if we can show you 
There's going to be, just like Willwood throws in these new silver clips, you're going to pop this clip, clip off. Also, there's a little, uh, uh, what I call horseshoe clip that actually keep this, uh, keeps this within the bracket. So good, good rule of thumb is take a wire wheel to the whole thing. And you'll see that it's just a little uh, hexagon. Pull out the clips and then just hit it with a hammer. Or uh, I used a, a small socket um, and just put it onto uh, right there basically and just hit it and it popped right out. And uh, you know, we go ahead and, and take these brackets and shine them up a little bit and de rustify them. But just a, a little tidbit, it pops right out. So, uh, we got everything painted, uh, the new bracket mounted up, uh, these are actually torqued to 30 foot pounds, I think it's a different torque spec if you're uh, doing the 3 bolt uh, spindle, I think it's like 40 pounds, these are 30 pounds, meh, whatever. Uh, so it's all bolted up, we cleaned this off a little bit, the next thing we have to do is actually pack the bearings, so we're going to get a little, little dirty here. So we got this from uh, AutoZone, AutoZone, AutoZone. We got this from AutoZone for like 20 bucks and it beats the old handheld method of, uh, of packing. So all we do is we drop this bad boy in here. This sounds so nasty, by the way. <laughs> like all of your least favorite noises. Sounds like Hunter's mom and Shorzy last night. Oh, <laughs> fuck you, Shorzy. So then, once it's uh, screwed down, it's going to push down on it or push down on it with your foot, whatever. It has a nice glob. It's coming out the side. Take this back off. So messy. So good. So we take that excess, pull it around the outside. Want to make sure there are little channels in here uh, so that when we actually push down on it, it pushes the uh, packing grease. And this is just all-purpose packing grease, but uh, it pushes the grease up through each and every single one of these little, little bearings. We want to make sure we get the outside pretty good. Now, we've already gone ahead and actually packed um, the new rotor assembly. We just globbed the shit out of it. All right, tons of globs. So then, what we're gonna do? Why does that feel small? <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> just drop that in there. Yeah, it's just like that. Oh, it's like that. Next part. We're gonna take this seal. Set it gently on top, and I need an instrument. Now, Hunter, what seal is that? It's the fucking wheel bearing seal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> am, I, am I wrong? I believe they call it the dust. Boot seal or something like that. Dust boot seal. Dust is a inner grease seal to keep the grease from. It's the es inner escaping. It's the inner grease boot seal. <laughs> Wheel seal. <laughs> but what we want to do? Lightly tap tap a roo, all the way around. This part makes me nervous because I can't actually fuck this up. God damn it. <laughs> Got it! You make sure it says it makes that noise all the way around. The dink dink. It makes oh. the same noise all the way around. Hear that? The dink dink. That's nice. That's real nice. So once this is uh, the inner grease boot dust wheel seal is on, is on, God damn it. We're going to take this and shove it on in here real nice. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hunter, what'd you do? 
in this educational segment of <laughs> don't fucking do what I did. <laughs> I put this on backwards. How did you put it on backwards? Uh, well, I put four bolts into something that was backwards. I need to do this with it, so I just need to flip <laughs> this around the other way. Because um, my mama didn't say I was that smart, but I sure was pretty. <laughs> we'll be back. And welcome back. Put this on here. Look! It fits! Bam. Squish. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Wham, bam! Next. We gotta pack the outer wheel dust, not wheel dust. Wheel bearing. <laughs> this is the outer wheel bearing. We're gonna pack it. Same way we did the other. Bloop. Drop it in the, the goop. The goop doop. Squish it. Squish it so hard. Let's go pack it. Pack it. Pack it in there. Pack it. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Another trick if it won't go, because sometimes when it gets lower in the tube, is to step on it. Unless you weigh about two pounds, then it really won't work. I don't weigh two pounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got enough in there. <laughs> So since my post-COVID fat ass <laughs> where'd stepped it, on it, where'd the wheelbarrow go? We're gonna go fishing. Oh God, it is. It, <laughs> it's, it's in there. That's typically a good thing. Oh yeah. Oh, so stiff. Slide that bad boy in there, like squish. Take some of that excess off the outside. Having rags is good. Having rags is Yes, it is. You will go through a bunch. This one's a dirty. This is a dirty job. This is a micro. It's a very dirty job. It's a dirty deed. It's what's, done dirt cheap. What's the guy's name micro. that does dirty job? Micro. Is it micro? Micro. You can tell I haven't watched that show very often, so. We microed it. So. Next is the washer. This washer has a little thingamadooter right there. See the thingamadooter? Uh-huh. Right there? Yeah. I did. I did. This has what a matching mean? female thingamadooter. What we're going to do is we're going to put the male thingamadooter <laughs> into the female thingamadooter. Do you know what that on, means? only goes on one way. Ask your mom. Thingamadooter's in. So, we're going to go ahead and take the nut, screw it onto the shaft with our hands. So, uh, once this is on, this is only needs to be hand tight, but we're going to make sure it's hand tight. Take a rag here, and then we'll turn it one way. Hand tight again. We'll turn it the other way. Make sure it's hand tight again. Turn it back and forth. Working in the grease, making sure it's set right. So that nut looks used. Doesn't it come with nuts? It does come with nuts. Um, but the new nuts didn't like the old shaft. So what we did is we took the old nuts, and sometimes you just got to put an old nut on an old shaft and call it good. So that's what we did in this case. We discarded the new nuts, and we used the old nuts. So make sure that if you're doing this yourself... Save your nuts. It's always good to save your nuts. Save your save your nuts, because sometimes the new nuts just don't do the job. Enough with the nuts? Yeah. Can I stop saying nuts? Yeah. Nuts! Get your hat, nuts! What's next? Oh, yes. This we can use. This is off the, the new one. This is the little castle top. It looks like a Coke bottle top, basically. What we're going to do is I'm going to line this up based off of the thingamadooter <laughs> where we can actually get a cotter pin 
provided very nicely by Willwood. So there is a hole. Can you see the hole? We did before you put the nut on. Okay, well that's good enough. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cutter pin, finesse it in the fucking hole. Oh yeah, just like that. Very good hammers. You definitely want to make sure you use. And a trick. Cutters. I was just taught by Chris, our master mechanic here. Make sure the long side's on the outside. So when you put it in, <clears throat> giggity. <laughs> it's easier to bend back. So then we can take this and where's my precision tool? Thank you. Once you use your precision tool, put it all the way in. Take our dikes, bend it over like show. Other precision tool, boop, 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 boop. across, and then we can actually just snip this extra one. Whammy! Beautiful. Then what? Next, we're gonna take this cool little cap. What does that do? It's the out, it keeps shit from going in the stuff. There you go. In the thing. The Medu dust cover. Maduder. <laughs> it's the thing of Maduder. <laughs> now we don't wanna kill this thing, so I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver that is on the other side of the car. Ah, welcome back. <laughs> I got the specialty tool. Stop texting. Be in the moment. <laughs> Tippy tap. Tippy tap. See, this is why some people say that we should go live. Just because I'm a little dumb. <laughs> Fucker. Fucker. This is a reality of mechanics, people. <laughs> Cocky balls! Just <laughs> give it a good whack. There you go. Try not to hurt the damn thing's feelings. It's all shiny and new. You know what? There we go. Right, now, now we're thinking with our fingers. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's if you're you. gonna be anything, be efficient. So then, uh, next we're gonna put the calipers on. And one thing to consider is make sure, it's, since you're dealing with all this grease and stuff, uh, and when you're putting uh, any new rotors on, even if it's just new rotors, you're not doing like a brake conversion or anything like that, take brake cleaner, which is actually used to clean brakes and rotors and stuff. I use it to clean everything else. I would say 2% of the time I use brake cleaner to actually clean brakes. But we're gonna give this a layer of brake clean, clean it all off because we don't want any of this grease on here. So we'll bolt the Willwood calipers up, we'll put in the uh, new pads, and we will be done with this part. Okay, so uh, Willwoods are mounted, calipers are mounted. These rear uh, the bolts uh, uh, that go onto this bracket are actually uh, torqued to 40 foot-pounds. And there's three little washers that you put on this side, as you can see that I'm pointing with the cotter pin. Um, and yeah, next is the pad insulation, which is honestly like the easiest thing I have ever seen. Chris? I mean, Easier than me. I was going to say your mother, but... Uh, so we take the pad and we literally just slide it in the old back door. Make sure the pad surface is touching the rotor. And that it's consensual. I have seen people do it reversed and the metal part is touching the rotor. You mean they put their thing down, flipped it, and needed to reverse it? Uh. <laughs> so, next. <laughs> so I'll take the dikes and we'll just spread the cotter pen. Oh, 
straight up and straight down. Fun fact, when you get brake fluid all over your goddamn fingers, everything is so slippery. So slippery. And bam! Aren't those pretty? They are pretty. Okay. Next thing, uh, we have already mounted... So pretty. We've already uh, hooked up our uh, new steel brake line. So, Chris, show them where... Okay, so this is a fitting that uh, comes in the kit, obviously. Uh, and so all we have to do is figure out where we're going to route our line, which is going to be over this uh, support bar. Strut rod. Your strut rod, right in the right in the old strut rod. And it just. And then bam. On the other side, uh, there was actually no no brake line at all. It was actually just pinched off. Um, so that obviously won't work. So we're gonna have to run a little bit of new brake line. Uh, and then we're going to be done with this project. If you're digging the content so far, if this is helping you out at all, hit the like, hit the subscribe, notifications, do the YouTube stuff, check us out on Facebook, etc. Uh, so, Chris, what's our next step? What are we doing next? So, our next step is to run the line on the other side, tighten down everything, and then we're done and ready to bleed the brakes. Bleeding the brakes is always fun if you have a brake bleeder. Um, it's easier, or if you have a friend, uh, that's the most common way. Friend and a wrench. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bleed and do all that stuff off camera, but until then, let's take a little, just a little, a little appreciation shot here. Isn't that pretty? It's so nice. It's real nice. It's real nice. Way better than stock. All right, that's it for today's episode of Lost Socket Garage. We got the Will Woods done. Super excited. I'm excited to test them out. Are you excited? I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Again, if uh, you enjoyed the content, like, subscribe, do the YouTube stuff, check us out on Facebook, uh, Lost Socket Garage. We have a store on there. It helps support the show. Uh, also, we're doing a basically a raffle right now where we're going to be giving away $500. Uh, you can spend on anything you want. could be putting towards wheels. It, it could be... It could be... <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. All you have to do to enter is go to our store or lostsocketgarage.com, spend $5, gets you one entry. $5 gets one entry. So until next time, do what you love, stay happy. Don't be a dick. As always, keep on driving.